Hey guys and welcome to a new video in this artificial intelligence tutorial. In this video we're going to continue talking about reinforcement learning and specifically like Markov decision processes. We're going to talk about what Markov decision processes are and what they can be used for. But first of all I'm going to show you an example of like what we can use reinforcement learning to. So in this example here Omea has created an application where agents are playing hide and seek against, against the other. And then we have these two blue agents here that's trying to hide. Uh, hide away from the red, red agent here and then over time the two um, hiders they learn to hide from the from the red agent so in this case here they have this room here where they have these boxes that they can play around with and try to block the entrance uh, entrances so the red agents can find the blue agents and then over time they just learn by reinforcement learning and exploring the environment and then getting the rewards if they don't get spotted by the red agent and then getting a negative reward if, if they get um, if they're found by the raid agent and then over time we just learn to like place those boxes here at the entrances so they don't um, so they don't get seen and then they can play around with those boxes here and just um, keep hiding and learning by using reinforcement learning and then the raid agents also learns over time so they have this ramp that they can play around with and try to use that ramp to to like try to find or like get over the walls here to find the blue agents so in this case here, we just saw that the blue entrance there, they're not, they have now learned to take to take the ramp here away from the red um, seekers so they can't find the blue ones because they, they, they've shown that they have already blocked the entrance but they could still um, get into them by by using this ramp and, and then find them and then they just learn over time that if they remove this ramp as well and block the entrance then they, they can just like hide away from the red uh, seekers in this case and here they're like making a triangle and then over time when new objects are placed like they just keep on learning by exploring and exploiting the environment and then just learning how to hide from from the red agents here so first of all we're going to recap from the last video what we talked about in the last video where we have uh, where we had a, sh a short introduction to reinforcement learning so in the last video we learned that reinforcement learning um, is where we have an agent that learns that learns through interacting with the environment that it is placed in and then we talked about this example here with the KR and bandit problem where like the true distributions of the rewards were unknown for um, for like the slot machines but it was learned over time by the agent by by using this uh, exploration and exploitation which we talked about so the agent was pulling the arm and ex and exploiting what it already knew and then at some epsilon greedy or if we use this epsilon greedy algorithm um, then at some times at some at some point it was out exploring the other arms and trying to um, find the distributions for the other arms as well so in the end when we were exploiting the environment we will always pull the best arm and get the maximum reward we also talked about like this learning rate like how fast our agent has to uh, like uh, needed to learn and if we took two big steps or like two small steps we will just hit it into a local or like a local minimum and when we're using reinforcement learning we always like want to to get the maximum reward and hit a global minimum and not a local minimum so we, we talked about like how we should determine the learning rate and, and some other different kind of stuff and saw an example of how we could use them in, in, uh, in a practical example. So now we're going to talk about Markov decision processes and what it is and how we can use it in reinforcement learning. So first of all, we have this example here where we have a state for, um, for the environment and then that state is given to the agent for some time step and also reward if it was given a reward for some action taking. So from a given state, the agent takes an action at time step t um, in the environment and then from the environment, the environment like outputs a new state to the time step a t plus one, and then for the action taken in the environment from from a given state uh, t here, then it also gets a reward um, for the for the time time step plus one, and then the reward and new state here will be fed to the agent, and then the agent can can take another action um, from that reward and the state it was given from the environment, and then. This process just keeps continuing until like our agents learn from the environment and stuff like that. So down here is just like it's just like um, how the how the like the timeline works. So first we're given a state here, and then we take an action, and from that action in the state we we get a reward here, and then we we return with a new state at an, at the next time step, and then we just keep continuing this process again here, where from the next state we are in, we take a new action and we get a reward from that action. And we do the same again for the next time step two here and three and so on. So like this is like how the, 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 the process works in, in reinforcement learning when we're talking about markup decision processes. So 
when we're talking about markups as this process, we have this markup properties. So our process or like our application and reinforcement um, learning um, process needs to have this markup property. And the process only, and we, if it has markup property if the process only depends upon the present state. So the state we're giving right now is the only only thing that matters when we when we're talking about like which action we should take and stuff like that. So it doesn't depend on any past states or sequence of the previous states that we've already been in. So when we're talking about the market property, we don't care about uh, the past states. We only care about what state we're in now, and then we take the best action for the state we're in now, and then we can say that our our process has markup property and then we can use um, the then we can use the methods and we're going over in this video as well so if a reinforcement learning task has the market property then it is a markup decision process and then we have this uh, probability down here where we can have like the probability of some reward for the next time step um, and like the state for the next time step that we're going to take Given we have a state we're in now and we're taking an action and then the rewards, uh, the rewards given to the agent and then we just continue that and then we have like this mark of decision process down here where we have like some probability of uh, the next state and the reward for the next state given a state and an action that we take in this time step here. So this is like just like the mathematical like uh, formulation like um, for like the mark of decision process that we're going to use as well. So if we're going to like have an example here of the markup decision processes, uh, we have just like um, a very easy example here, like or a simple example where we draw we draw the balls here from a bowl, and we can then say like what is the probability of drawing a red ball or a blue ball? And in this case here, there are five of each, so the probability would be fifty percent of drawing a, a, a red ball or a, or a fifty percent for the probability of drawing a blue ball. So if, we're to, if, we're, if we want to like determine if this uh, process here is a market uh, decision process and it has market property, then it is not a market decision process if we if if we like if, if it is without with, without replacement of the ball. So if we take the ball out here of this um, of this bowl here after we have drawn it, then it won't be a market decision process anymore because then then we, we need to like the next action we take and the next action we, we take like with, with which is drawing a ball it will then like it will then depend on previous state because now we have removed one of the colors from uh, from the bowl and it will not be a 50 50 percent probability of drawing a red or a blue ball so if we had replacement in, in this example here it would be a mock decision process because then it doesn't matter for any given time step like which action we're taking we will still have a 50 50 percent uh, probability of drawing a red ball or a 50 percent probability probability of drawing a blue ball so this is just a simple example of like how we can set up a process and and determine if it's a market decision process or not because if it's a market decision process um our action taken like or the action we're going to take only depends on the present state and not the previous, uh, not the previous or past states or or um, sequence of states before that. So we can also talk about like finite marker uh, decision processes, which is when we have this finite market uh, market decision process, we have a, a, a set of st states and the actions, and then those sets are finite. So we have like a finite and. Um, a finite set of states and actions and then we have this like um, mathematical expression like s and a which is the sets of the states and the actions and then we can set up this one step dynamics which we're going to use in in, in, in later in the on, on the next slides where again we have this uh, probability here for for like the next state and the reward and then given we have in a state and we take an action like what is the probability of the, of the next state and the reward given as the state we're in now and the action we take. And then we can set up this one step dynamics, which we're going to use um, as well. And then we, we end up with, this, with some math here, which is two, uh, two summations of, of these probabilities here. They need to be one uh, because the probabilities uh, should always be like 100% um, for all this, the sets in our, or like all the states in our state set and all the actions in our action set given, given a state. So an example of a finite ma uh, market decision process is this checkerboard here, where when we play chess, we know all the possible states and actions. So we have a finite um, set of states and actions. 
Because if we have this king example down here on the checkerboard, then we know all the states and all the actions um, in this case here. And it's also, it also has Markov um, decision um, uh, property because we only it only depends on this state it is in now. And we don't really care like about uh, the present state it has been in. So right now the king is in this state here, is in the middle, and it can either like go in the direct, uh, di diagonal direction or it could go to the left and right and up. So these are the possible actions that this agent can take now. And the states here are like the, the possible, is the checkerboard here, it is the state where it can go in, in these uh, directions here and which is the actions that it can take. So in this case here, we have a finite number like or a finite, uh, finite set of states and actions that it can take in this example here. And this is like why um, it is easy or like kind of simple to use reinforcement learning in, in for example, uh, chess because we have a, a, a finite Markov decision process. So I also wanted to like to, to tell you guys about the, like elements in reinforcement learning, like the different kind of elements and how we define the elements in reinforcement learning. So the time steps don't really have a fixed interval of real time. So when, when I talk about like time steps for a robot and for like a, a state or an, an action taken for some given time step, it doesn't have to be like the real time or like a fixed interval of real time. It doesn't have to be like each time stick corresponds to like each second uh, that goes in real time. Like a time step could be um, when um, a new move has been made for, uh, um, from the opponent in chess, then a new time step will begin and then we will take an action in that time step for some given state um, of that time step where each time step could be like every time it is your turn, then it is a new time step. And actions for an agent um, in reinforcement learning can both be like low level, high level, or like mental level. So we, we really like to define our actions ourselves. So we can like define actions of an agent to be like apply some voltage to motors, which is really low level, or like some more high level applications where act an, an action could be accept a job offer if if the agent has learned that that these properties or like characteristics of, of a job is, is good. And then we can have the robot taking an action of uh, accepting and job offer. And we can also like have um, some mental level of actions. So if some is something like occurs, like then the agent can take an action of like changing focus, for example, from one thing to another um, for some given state, if that action is optimal and it, it gives the maximum reward. And the state, states can also be low level sensations, abstractions, symbolic. It can be based on memory. So for example, when we're talking about market decision processes um, we, and we don't want it to like uh, depend on, on the present and we have some like really important information from the present that we want to use, then we can actually like implement uh, memory in our states and then we can have that uh, that memory like that memory from the previous states in, inside of the given state we're in now. And then we all, then we actually like know something about the past in the given state now, and will, it will still have mock of decision process uh, property. And it can also like the states can also be subjective and, and, and et cetera. So we really like to find our states and actions and also like the time step ourselves when we're talking about reinforcement learning. And a reinforcement learning agent doesn't have to be a whole animal or a robot, etc. Like it can be a specific part or another like smaller type of, of an agent. Like it can be like, for example, if we're talking about a robot, it could be a robot arm or like the head or only like the, the legs. Um, so it doesn't really have to be like a whole a whole thing or agent. It can just be like a specific part or some like computer computer game or like a computer that tries to learn something. So again, we also define our our reinforcement learning agent by ourselves. So it's like, is it really up to yourself and what you define your different kind of elements in reinforcement learning too? And it's also what makes reinforcement learning uh, such a cool thing and nice feature. And you can do like almost everything you want to do with reinforcement learning, where you have an agent that you can place in, in some environment and then it can try to interact with that environment and learn different kinds of stuff to try to maximize the reward and get the maximum, uh, like, uh, like the maximum output. So the rewards are also something we define ourselves and it can be given from the agent's environment, but we should make sure that the agent can change uh, the rewards um, because we want to give the agent rewards on like how do, uh, good it, uh, how good it does and how good it, it is at, at learning. So the agent, agent shouldn't be able to change the rewards or like have anything with, with defining the rewards. So the whole environment is not necessarily unknown to the agent. Like we could, 
uh, we could feed information to the environment uh, to the agent if we want to like learn it uh, have it learned faster or for some other different kind of uh, purposes so only incomplete uh, controllable so the agents shouldn't be shouldn't be able to control the environment that is in because we should define the environment and then the the agent should only interact with the environment so another example here we're going to have is a recycling robot which is a, also a finite market decision process example so in this example here we have at each time step the robot has three actions to take so it can either go out and search for a can or it can wait for some someone to bring a can or it can go home and recharge if it has used a lot of energy so in this case here um, our state will be um it will like all also depend on the previous states and when we're talking about like because we're implementing memory in the given state now so it will still have micro process because we just implement like the previous states in the in the present state now by having some like energy level um memory for our state now or and for our, uh, our agent and then in example here like searching is better uh, but you, it uses battery, so it is cost, it is really costly if it runs out of battery while out searching. Um, if we have a robot arm or, um, that is trying to like pick up cans and or like is driving around trying to pick up cans and it runs out of battery, then we will need to pick it up and 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 put it back in the charger, which is like really costly. And decisions are made from the current state, as I talked about. Like it, but it contains the energy level. Like it can either be high or low. So we ha still have this markup decision process, but we have just implemented some memory from the previous state as well. And then the reward is the number of cans collected for a robot because we want to recycle as many cans as possible. So the more cans it collects, the more the, re more, the more reward our recycling robot gets. So in this case here, we can set up like this scheme or like this table here where we have um. A set of states here where it can either be high or low the energy level and we also have some some um, some actions which we can take if if the energy level is high so f so we can take different kind of actions for a given state so we can either like search and wait or if our energy level is low we can either search wait or we can go home and recharge and then we have this alpha here which is the probability that that searching in high leaves energy level at high so we we really want this um um, alpha here to be to be high because we need a, a high probability that we won't run out of energy when we're out searching and then we have this beta here which is the probability that searching in low leaves the energy level at low and then we can set up this table here for like our our different kind of actions for a given state and then we can see here like we're just going to get go over like some of the examples here where if we're in the state here and we have high energy level and we're searching like then the probability here of the next state is uh, like the probability of that we're still at the high level energy level in the next state is, is still high it is alpha here and then the r search here is the expected number of cans while uh, searching because the reward here was the total like we want to maximize the amount of cans that we're returning to the agent and then we just keep doing this here for the given sets or like the given states and the actions that we can take so we have these diff different kind of states, uh, like states here we can be in for a robot, uh, robot's energy level, and then we can either search, uh, wait, and recharge, and then the probability uh, that the ne next state, that we, we can go to the next state when we give uh, when we give it a state and an action, and then we can set up like the probabilities here um, for the energy level, and also we can set up like the rewards here for our searching and waiting and the different kind of like states and actions and also it also depends on the next states um, we can take so then we can set up this scheme here uh, like table here and then we can have our our robot learning uh, with reinforcement learning so the next thing we're going to talk about here is goals and rewards in reinforcement learning where a goal should specify what we want to achieve and not how we want to achieve it so we don't really care like how um how we're going to achieve it we just like want to specify what we want to achieve and then our robot will try to to get to that point and a goal must be outside of the agent's control so the agent shouldn't be able to change the goal we want to set the goal for the agent and then that agent should try to reach the goal not try to modify it or control it and in, 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 in some way and then the agent must be able to measure this is success from the rewards it can either be, it be explicitly or frequently during its lifespan so the agent must be able to measure like how good it how good it performs and how good it's learning by getting these rewards and trying to maximize uh, try, try to maximize the reward it gets. 
and then we have rewards and returns where like the objective in reinforcement learning as i already like said many times is to maximize the long-term future reward so we want to have our ro robot trying to re 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 uh, to go to the goal and re return the maximum number of reward and then we choose an action for a given time step to maximize that future reward so in this case here we just have a sequence of rewards and then we try to um, estimate or like this maximize the reward so then we just like add all the rewards for each time step that we're going in and then we get that maximum reward but we can also like when we're talking about episodic we can have either episodic and continuing tasks in reinforcement learning so when we have an episodic task it ends at some finite time t so we have some task and we have some episodes that it's going over like for example when we saw the example with um, open AI where we had these agents playing hide and seek then an episode um, ends if the agents get uh, get uh, are found or it also ends if it can be found as well and then we can like calculate the rewards by just adding them all together and then we can see like how good our our, uh, our agent has performed but we can also have this continuing task that doesn't end and we don't have a finite time so then it's like a, a bit harder to calculate the reward because we don't know like how for how long it's going to how long it's going to keep on going because it's just a continuous task but we can actually like make our um our episodic task continue as well if we just have this loop here which just goes um, goes back and then the reward will just be like at the end of the sequence and we don't want to like terminate our our, our um, episodic task or terminate our task then we can just have this loop going back and then the reward will be zero. So when we have this continuing task here, we also need to have this discounted return because then we can not just add up all the rewards because we don't know all the rewards because we don't have a finite time where, it, um, where our episode uh, terminates. So we can have these future rewards that, that are weighted or like discounted. So we're talking about the discounted rewards when we have continuing task. So, and then we discount our, um, our return here with this gamma factor here. So the longer out in the future our, our, our rewards are, like the less impact they have. So we can see that we don't scale the reward at the next time step here by anything. And then the, the longer we come out, or like um, the longer we come out in, in time step, like the less impact the reward has. So, so the robot tried to take an action um, depending on the next date and a couple of next days and not the reward it gets like a long way out in the future so the longer out in the future the less impact on the overall return and an example of continuing task could be a robot arm that that is just doing some picking or like at some manufacturing where it's just like picks items and places at, at another like another place or um a pail um and then it, it will be a continuing task and we should take the action that is that is best for the next time step and not um, not that it gives a better reward like in two minutes and, and stuff like that. So just to summarize what we've been over in this video here, we have talked about market decision processes and what it is. And we talked about what the market property was and how we can, how we can see if our process ha has this market property um, by not depending on the previous dates and only by the state we're in now. And then we could implement some memory from the previous dates into our, into our um, agent and it will still have this market decision process. Um, we also went over an, an example with a robot arm and reinforcement learning with this uh, re recycling robot and we talked about the goals and rewards and the rewards and returns where a robot has a goal that it, uh, that it wants to reach and then it tries to maximize the rewards all the time um, to reach that goal most um, optimal and, and then in the end we talked about the episodic and continuing task where where we, if we had a continuing task we needed to have this discounted return so the longer we come out in the future, like the less impact the returns has, because when we have this continuing task, we don't have um, a, a defined like or finite time step where our epic, epic, ep episode ends. So we need this discounted return. So our action is based on the rewards for the next couple of time steps or like the next couple of rewards and not that much out in the future. So thank you guys for watching this video and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video. And also like this video if you like the content and you want more of it in the future. So I'm currently also doing a computer vision tutorial in OpenCV um, in C++ and an algorithm data structure tutorial in C++ as well. So if you're interested in one of those, I'll link to one of them up here or else I'll just see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.